Hi everybody, welcome to this week's Down Home with Tina. If you're wondering what I am doing, we're going to get to that here in just a minute. But what I want you to do is, because the last couple of weeks on my Facebook I've been telling you I'm going to be a character of one of the past productions of the Ohio University of Lancaster Theatres because they've got a big huge fun celebration coming up in the springtime and I want you to go and guess who do you think that I am before we yeah tell you who I am <laughs> which will be a little bit later in the show but I have with me artistic director <laughs> professor Victor Jones from Ohio University Lancaster Theater Department and Victor I have known you well it goes way back because way I know back. I have family member that knows you and she's talked about you and so when I first found out about what you were doing in Lancaster at the Ohio <laughs> University Lancaster Theater I thought I have got to get him on the show with me and I thought this, this is how this started today folks so Victor I called him up uh, texted him uh, texted him a couple of weeks ago and I said hey do you want to be on? And he goes, that would be wonderful. And then I got this idea and I said, how about if I dress up as one of your characters in one of your, uh, your upcoming productions? And then I looked to see who it was and you totally would have figured it out because of what that coming production was. So I didn't tell him what I was doing since then. He just said, oh, something fun or whatever. And so he walks in today and he's <laughs> like, what were you like? Because <laughs> he, he wouldn't say it to me, but I did see some kind of confused, maybe little look on his face. Victor, what was it uh, that you were thinking? What was going through your mind? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, I was looking at just and I oh, I, I wonder what character she's dressed up as today uh, for our upcoming production. <laughs> and I said, oh. Um, so I wasn't sure, so I, I wish you great, I but I wasn't the dog sure. Out. I pulled the dog out and he goes, what's the dog for? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I wanted to be from one of your past productions because you're celebrating 10 years this year. And then he goes, oh. <sighs> now I've got it. Now I know. And I laughed so hard because I felt so bad because I was like, no, no, I'm not the gal from mm -mm, the upcoming production, not at all. And you're all going to find out who, what is going on, Victor? It has oh, been gosh. 10 years. What a ride it's been, huh? Oh, my goodness. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. What a ride. I can't believe we're <laughs> celebrating 10 years of theater at Ohio University Lancaster. Amazing. 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 And what all, all that has happened since you started 10 oh, years ago, Victor. Oh, well, it's hard to believe that eight years ago, we did Almost Maine, which is our current upcoming production mm -hmm. uh, in 2012. And here we are 10 years later, uh, eight years since that show, but 10 years celebrating uh, the, the 10th anniversary. And we're doing Almost Maine again with Ohio University alumni guest stars who were in the original production back in 2012. You have had so much happen. Can you give uh, just maybe in brief of just what's happened with the theater department itself and the theater, Wagner Theater. Oh gosh, uh, we've had a major theater renovation which happened mm -hmm. about four and a half years ago. It's beautiful. State of the art, everything mm -hmm. for our students to learn, uh, that prepares them to go out into the world of to work as a as a theater student or a technical person. Because it's not easy. It's not easy. And you're not easy on that. Oh, uh, well, I, I challenge them to be the best that they can And that's be. exactly what I mean by that. And you should. You should. If it's something that they're going to be serious and want to do as a career, then it's the, you're right. It is. Very competitive. Uh, we've gone to the Kennedy Center American uh, College Theater Festival as a regional finalist. Uh, we've been recognized nationally. We've taken shows on the road down to Ohio yes. University to perform uh, for the On the Green. So there's a lot of things that have happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're celebrating our 10th year anniversary with all kinds of special things. Almost yes. Maine, Encore Production, uh, featuring the original cast member, Cherise Hubbard Lagabo, uh, Mason Taylor, who does a lot of film work in oh, the area. I love Mason. Therese, uh, Travis Huddleston. Then coming up April 18th at 7 o'clock, this is really cool. We're bringing back 23 alumni guest artists who were the original cast members, one or two cast members from all of our musicals, who's going to wow. perform one of the songs from the musical that we're in, and we're not revealing who those guest artists are. So one night only event, April 18th, seven o'clock, a uh, black tie affair for the artists yep. on stage and evening gown. So it's a really special event. And then topping all that up, coming up July 26th, 
the beloved classic musical, The Sound of Music with the Seven Von Trapp children. It will be very exciting to end the 10th anniversary season. Which is who he thought I was going to be. I thought and she was so going to kind of up as one of the leading like that? Yeah. actresses in our yeah. upcoming productions, but it's a past production. So you got to... I kind of ca I caught him off. I caught him off guard. <laughs> so I thought she was going to dress up as... Maria Von Trapp today, but no, it's no. this person. Could you see why he was like, kind of when we were telling the story? Um, I think I think she got it wrong. <laughs> but I do, one of my, the past productions I do, folks, I do need to say really quickly, the blonde wig was missing. So we, we decided brown and you've we captured did a little it. bit of blonde Even without the it. blonde hair, you have captured it. Have I? You've nailed you got it. it. So and he, this has yes. helped. This has helped, yes. And do you remember his name? I do, do you want me you to do? say? Yes. Bruiser. That's right. I didn't, but my friend did, who was helping me with the wig. Thank you, Katie Clark, who is a hairstylist and great, who came out, and she is the one who helped me Looks get great. this all together. So anyways, had to put that in there, too. So let's continue to talk, sure. Victor. You've got so many great things going on. You have auditions coming up? Uh, auditions just wrapped up. The oh. cast list is out. Uh, auditions is. for Almost Maine, okay. but the auditions for The Sound of Music, we have youth auditions, which are okay. March 7th and 8th coming up. Perfect. That's anyone from Lee Salon down to the youngest. Okay. March 7th and 8th at Wagner Theater. You can find information on our website. Uh, that's for The Sound of Music. And so then the general auditions for the adults are May 2nd and 3rd. What can you recommend folks to be prepared for when coming out to one of those productions? Uh, just to have fun. Just to have fun and enjoy the art of musical theater, uh, that in itself, that'll shine through. Sing those classic songs, you know, Do Re Mi, you have Climb Every Mountain, The Hills Are Alive with the Sound of Music. There's so many songs that everybody knows. Uh, and over the holidays, I watched it and fell in love with the show all over again. Uh, do you have folks that you are always, um, and areas that you're always in the need of for folks, for instance, like technical support, oh, lighting, and things like that. And we're do you recommend looking, background? Yes. Um, uh, we're always looking for volunteers, production. especially because the summer show is the community theater event. Uh -huh. So we're always looking for technical people, uh, people okay. uh, someone to help with building the set. Volunteer. Do, volunteers, mm -hmm. set building, lighting, booth, uh, digital imaging, painting, just simple things, ushering. And we always want people to get involved. Now, how do they do that? Because they're not going to audition to do that. No, you can email me. Just say, okay. I'm interested in doing it. I want to contact you. What do you have available? And it's really done. There's always something for someone. What has been your favorite past performance? And I'm not saying it's because the actors and the story, maybe the, the mix oh, of gosh. that's been the whole big, huge, like, the whole big shebang, deal. this is it. Yeah. When you talk about memorable moments and shebang and all that sort of thing, had to be our production of The Wizard of Oz when we had the guest artists come in from On The Fly Productions who were finalists from America's Got Talent and they came in and spent a week preparing the students to do all the flying, the rigging for when uh, Glinda flew and the Wicked Witch flew and the flying monkeys and this, the hands-on training monkeys. that was made possible by the Ohio, Ohio Arts Council mm -hmm. uh, with a grant to bring those guest artists to our campus to train our students. Uh, and the production was just magical all around. Yeah. What is one of the productions you would like to see come on to stage here at OUL Theater or for the oh big gosh. shebang for the summer? Oh gosh, um, summer. there are three. There, <laughs> there are three, three productions that I say, I'll probably retire if you know I've done one of them. Um, I would love to do the production of Wicked, which is not available. Uh, the oh. licensing is not permitted. Uh, the other one that was most recent that I saw in New York, which really caught me off guard recently, uh, on one of my trips that I go to was the musical Come From Away, hmm. uh, which is about 9-11. You say a musical oh, about 9-11. Wow. It's also based on the true story of all the planes that were diverted from airspace and had to land. Uh, do you know what I'm talking so, about? No. Oh, it's no, a moving so, story. Yes, no, absolutely. Moving that's what I'm thinking. So that's something you would recommend folks to. Oh, see it when you're in New York. It'll probably run for a long, long time. It's performed without an intermission. It's 90 minutes. It mm -hmm. will touch your heart, grab your heart. Uh, wow. Because as soon as that musical starts, you're sitting there and you remember that moment. It all comes back. When mm -hmm. you Everything. found out that morning. And it's done through song and musical theater and it's powerful. So wow. it's just one of those things that stays with you and really touches your heart. Yeah, and that one is that one's not available. It's not available either. either. So what it's in New York. Come from away. Yeah. And if there That's was the one more, it would probably it's probably a tie 
for Phantom of the Opera or Les Mis. Uh, oh, they're both wow. restricted right now with different licensing mm -hmm. guidelines, but I love both of them. How do you get the licenses uh, for all of this? Well, coming because up. This is, they're tough. It's not an easy thing, right? Sound of Music was really tough. I applied for five years. It wow. was on a national tour, and the tour kept coming through our area. So they wouldn't get me the license, so I would, re I would apply for it four or five times a year. No, 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 I'm sorry. The, sh the national tour is too close to your area. So when I got a yes this time, I was like, I think this is a mistake. I need to call and verify that they didn't make a mistake and I was so excited. Then I had to keep the secret. You know, That's I had to keep hard. the secret till you know, you license everything yeah. and pay for all the royalties yeah. and everything before you can announce it. So anybody who wants to uh, like stay up on the next upcoming production, I want to try to have you back sure. too. But where do they get all that information? You can go to our Facebook you? page. You can go to the Ohio okay. University website. There's information everywhere. Uh, Ohio.edu forward slash Lancaster. Uh, OUL Theater, spelled the Greek way, T-E-A-T-R-E -T -E -T -E, uh, Theater on Facebook. You can find it all there. Okay. And because of this 10-year celebration you said coming up, it's probably uh, limited seating, correct? It is limited seating. Okay. Uh, there's a VIP ticket that's $40 that includes light hors d'oeuvres and a meet and greet with the cast right before the show. It's $40, but the actual show only is $25. Limited seating, limited availability. Tickets are on sale now. It is always so great to have Victor Jones with me. He is the Artistic Director, Ohio University of Lancaster Theater Department. Stay up and on with what's happening and what's going on. It's amazing to see what, and I call them kids because, and some are not, because some are grown adults who also go back and take a theater class, and probably just because they want to work under the direction of That's Victor. Okay. Professor Jones, and sure. so I think it's really great what we've got in Lancaster. It's a piece of theater that you'll get, and you don't very you don't get it very often in other communities. And for our community, Thank it you. is a blessing. So I love Thank having you. him on the show. He will definitely be back. And you got to figure out who I am if you haven't figured out. So close your eyes for a minute, and think blonde, blonde, and and Bru Bruce, 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 yeah. Hey guys, I, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. You're watching down here with Tina. <laughs>
inspirational people as well as first responders and Ralph was for many many years so I want to thank you for your service and the time that you did and want to ask you quickly as why was it that that was something that you had chosen to do for a what was it your career it, well it was a volunteer volunteer and, okay uh, yeah it was basically set up because of my father and my uncles uh, it's kind of like inbred it, it was yeah. You saw your uncles being volunteers of the community, and your father was a community leader. Uh, he was ended up being the assistant chief for the township. Um, so you you just born into it. I got a cousin who was in with it. At one point, there was my cousin, myself, my father, and my one uncle. We were all at the same time. So it's just in your blood. Yes. That's right. Yes, and then Angie, you are going to share with us a little bit of the what you guys do and and what it is that you give back in the community, right? Right. We started, actually Ralph could start it with you because John Adams was a firefighter with Ralph on the department okay. at the time. And he, well, you can tell that part of it. Well, we was on the department and volunteer and when Chelsea had gotten sick and had passed away, a uh, fire, fellow firefighter John Adams went and uh, wanted to do a, a program, something similar to like Toys for Tots, mm -hmm. but he wanted to do it locally. And he said, can we do it in remembrance of your daughter, Chelsea? Oh. And we said, sure, we can do it. So um, when he started the program, he asked us first year to be a part of it, and we just couldn't do it. It, it was just too hard, too emotional. Was this the first year that you would have been without her? Because yeah. this takes place every year at what time? Of the year. Christmas. It, it's okay. Christmas. So, it's, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. we started with that, but then he wanted to keep it going and he did it as uh, a community involvement because he sat there and said, we, I noticed that a lot of the community supported you mm -hmm. in your time of trouble, and so we wanted to give back. What, what, can I, is it okay to ask about what, um, how old was Chelsea? She was 14 months old. Um, she had a rare genetic disease that only one in 10,000 babies pass oh, away from it. Wow. And she had been sick prior, about a month prior with bronchitis and was in the hospital. No symptoms whatsoever of this. And through research, because they have to do an autopsy on any child that's under two, I couldn't let it go. I needed to know why as a mom. Absolutely. Why. You know, they were just going to say it's SIDS or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I needed to know. And through the autopsy, a Dr. Ronaldo in Chicago had a part of her liver that he had autopsied, and it was called MCAD, medium chain acid disorder. And it was a very a fatty liver. It was just a very rare disease. And unless you know you're a carrier of it, you have okay. no idea. Because back then, they didn't do the test when they pricked the baby's foot. That that's was not that. included in that. And that's what that is for it when they do that. And part of part of the it testing. Is it is a treatable and disease. Is a treatable disease. And oh. so now it's it's a mandatory test when they do it. But oh. back then it wasn't. Because she was born January eleventh of ninety five and passed away April third of ninety six. So how old would she be here coming up in a few days? Um twenty five. Twenty five. Twenty five years old. Mm -hmm. What is it that you feel that you can share with folks about the things and th that you've gone through and faced with Chelsea? To turn a tragedy into something positive because mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until Chelsea died that I found out from my mom. I knew I had a brother. He only lived for eight hours, but back then it was never talked about. Oh. And I never knew what my mom went through until Chelsea died. Because mm -hmm. back in the 60s, it was just, you know, you just don't discuss that. Right. And yeah. Yeah. and I wanted Chelsea to be a part, to be memory positive. Mm -hmm. And so we built the playground in memory of her and Amanda. Oh, you did? We had the grant grant money. We worked with grant the money, we commissioners. We planted in through the village of Amanda. Uh -huh. We had it done also April the 3rd in 1997. We did that on that. Got a core, uh, got a grant money from uh, Robin Jacobs when she was working here for the county. Mm -hmm. And now, how do you keep her memory going in the community? Because of course, she will always be in your memory, and will always have memory of her through you. What are you doing in the community by giving back to children? Well, we do the coin drive at the school. John started that, mm -hmm. and um, grades K through two 
three through five and six through eight. Mm -hmm. They have a contest with the heaviest amount of coins. The top two classes in that group, they win a pizza party given by the fire department separately from Aww. what we raised for Chelsea's Christmas. Yeah. And then. Yeah, the fire department is the Manning Township and Clear Creek Township Fire mm -hmm. Department. They both go in to help pay for that because we help everybody in the Amanda Township Fire Department, the Clear Creek Township Fire Department, which incorporates Madison Township, Clear Creek Township, Amanda Township, and part of Hocking Township because Amanda Clear Creek schools are in those areas. Oh, wow. So, so that's how we do our covering and how we help the, that same community involvement. So when we go do that coin drive to those kids, we tell them that we're helping the needy families Mm -hmm. boys and girls and the families within that area to give back that money staying locally it's not That's going right. any place else uh, we also have the Amanda FFA department mm -hmm. Amanda Clerk Rick's FFA department and they yeah. participate in with this that they go around and take grocery sack bags and go to the houses in Amanda and into Stoutsville mm -hmm. and put it there to collect the food and they will collect it and sort it and then they bring it to us and we give it out to the families also. And how many years have they been doing this, the students for the FFA program, has it been? It's probably been a good mm, 20 years. 20 years, I would say. Oh my goodness. So folks in the community are expecting it. Oh yeah, when, they that's know what like I mean. right Yeah, they're like ready for it to be. They know that it's gonna yeah. come and then, you know, we go to every classroom and we say, okay, we talk to the kids and we say, now, is this about a pizza party? And they're like, no, it's about helping others. So if we get that oh, Angie. along, that they understand that from kindergarten up, and we've gone to Walmart and shopping and we've seen kids in high school and they're like, we remember you, we used to do the coin drive. And, yeah. But we provide um, outfits, coats, boots or shoes, they get toys. They get wrapping paper, they get tape, batteries, they get smoke detectors, they get stockings, candy, gift cards oh. to Aldi's. Um, and these are the kids that are in the community that need it the most? It could be one of the students' classmates. They don't mm -hmm. know because it's so confidential. Okay, that's another thing it's I was going to ask you. It's extremely confidential. And, and we might have teachers or church families that will adopt a family and it's all confidential. They'll get um, the sizes, they'll get boy or girl and then we bag it all up and then have the families come pick it up at the we firehouse. Know, we know who, who it's going to. Mm -hmm. They do not. Because they have to go the through an information referral system. Okay. It's a red sure. flag through the county so they're not okay. double dipping the system. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So. That's nice that you guys can really be able to, to continue to do and give back and include the school and the kids They're our biggest fundraiser that. and that's, yeah. that's the thing. It's like Ralph and I never would think we'd ever be in this position. That's God. You know, for a long time I was like, it's all about Chelsea, it's all about Chelsea. And it's it's keeping her memory alive, but this is God's work. He put us in this position to have that way to, to help others. Mm -hmm. It's taken us a long time to get to that point, but I couldn't even imagine. I've known people personally. I knew a, um, a medic, a paramedic who actually had lost his son to SIDS and he was home and he couldn't save him and he didn't know if he could ever do his job ever again no. because it was the one well, thing I that rough the what yeah the scanner I was like I can't have that in the house right now because to hear oh, that over and over the yes. calls it was just too hard but well just I want to say thank you guys so much folks who are interested and in wanting to participate do you have a big event every year is it a big event or you just are taking things throughout the year because I know of course it happens at Christmas time we, we can take it any time if they contact us. Okay, if it's us. something. Yeah. That how do they do that, Angie? They can contact us um, through the 1-800. It's an 888-707-4984. Okay. And that's for um, the Amanda Fire Department. It rings into our house. Perfect. Perfect. So I just have a couple of little things. I always give treats to my folks. So you oh. each get a treat. Oh. Oh. Get homemade cookies. Down Thank home you. with Tina. We can't go without Thank treats. You. And you. then this is in case you need a pair of boots. No, it's fine. <laughs> I don't know if he needs boots or not. Walker Shoe Centers, they give us the certificate for $40 for either one of you. So to go to, or $30, I'm sorry, I said that wrong, $30. Oh my and then gosh. you can buy yourself a piece of jewelry, Ava Jewelry, oh. if you want. Or you could really do it for her. <laughs> 
<laughs> thank, thank you. you. And blessings thank to you, you guys, and thank you for doing what you do and thank continuing you. to do what you do. Um, folks, yeah. keep an eye out. Contact the Amanda Fire Department if you want to find out more. It's down to Watina. I'll be back in a few. Hi, I'm Amanda Wattenberg, Regional Director at Ohio Guidestone. Do you or does someone you know have a substance abuse disorder? Have you been thinking about getting help but don't know where to start? It takes a lot of courage to ask for help, but it's the most important step you can take. If you think you know everything that's available in Fairfield County, think again. Like other chronic diseases, addiction can be managed successfully. Treatment enables people to counteract addiction's powerful, disruptive effects on the brain's behavior and regain control of their lives. Even if it takes multiple attempts, treatment does work and people do recover from addiction every day. So keep trying because your life matters. You matter and we're here to help. Call 211 and ask for the treatment resources available right here in Fairfield County. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. Down Home with Tina is brought to you by Huddle Tire Company, Fairfield Area Humane Society, Donald Law Office, and if you want to check us out, you can check us out at Spectrum 1021, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 10 a.m., 4 p.m., and 7 p.m. Also, CLN, your hometown connection on YouTube, and my Facebook, Down Home with Tina really have some awesome inspirational guests on the Down Home with Tina show and I'm so grateful for the things that they do and continue to do and it was really great because the guests I just had Ralph and Angie and what they do for the kids in the community because it's teaching the kids to give and go above and beyond and, and without expecting anything in return and I think that's just a big lesson in itself. And it's also them helping families that they don't even know they're helping. They don't know if they're helping kids that are sitting next to them in class and things like that. So I love what they're doing. Kathy Duffus, who was on earlier on, on the show here, and the way she continues to put smiles on kids' faces. All these folks are doing this out of the kindness of their heart. And with it just being a new year, we got to keep in mind, folks, there are things that are going to happen that um, hopefully we can make it, as Angie had said earlier, from such a tragedy that they faced into a positive. And I guess that's my challenge for you. I know we've been into the year, new year just for about a week, but maybe you can try your best to make a positive difference in something that can change for you or someone in your life. I recently had a story about a friend who had told me that she had a fit friend that she didn't even know was sick and she called him up and didn't get him so she was out of town so she took the necessary steps to make sure that he was okay and come to find out to make the long story short if the medics and the police didn't come to get into his home that when they did he would have never made it so it's it's about taking those steps if you feel that somebody or something our higher being or our lord is pushing us to do something i would recommend that you just do it thank you so much for watching down home with tina god bless and happy new year